What's up, Robert? Clean shaving, man. Yeah. Clean cut, too. Let's see if this thing will go off. It says my frame. Current frame rate is too, too low. We'll see. I mean, it looks like everything's going off good. Let's see if the room fills up, too, if I can figure out how to tag a few people on this. Fills up. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. It's Mike Love. Mike Love, these are my roots. That's what we're going to talk about our roots. I think that, um, Title was there's the title. The last enemy destroyed. I put a post up earlier about it too. Let's see where this goes. Let's see if I can tag a few people. Shows up, shows up. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Figured I'd come on and go live. Been a minute. Been going and seeing a lady. Just catch up for a minute here. I've been going and seeing a lady down in South Alabama that is um, certified, trained, in, and experienced in, psych, in the Site K method, which is really cool if you're interested. Look it up. Um, glad you're here, everybody that's here. If I could figure out how to tag people an easy way on this computer, I would, but <laughs> uh, I got to go search people and all that kind of stuff, and I just don't feel like doing that right now. So anyway, yeah, I've been going down there and through Site K, it's uh, <clears throat> it's kind of like Shauna, like you and Brian in the uh, Therophostic Prayer Ministry. Uh, the difference, uh, I would say, is that well, it's not really a difference. It's just another technique. Yep, another another technique to rewrite the past, rewrite of our, rewrite maybe our perceived memories, the limitations. I would say it's a, it's a way to transmute limiting thoughts and beliefs, which I've been very interested in for a very long time. The 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 triggers, you know, and um, also the whole uh, pano pano technique of prayer. 
which simply said, I mean, real simple, everything that comes into my awareness is a shared memory, every experience. So if you come to me with an issue, it's, it's, it's revealing that we have a shared memory and I can turn within and in the memory or enemy, I can love my enemy. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, in many ways, <laughs> many ways. And I'm interested in all of them actually, because I think we got a lot of tools in our tool belt that, that we can use, but we got to use them, you know? And for me, I started seeing some patterns in my life that, you know, I wasn't feeling good, honestly. I wasn't feeling good on the inside. I, I was uh, disturbed, agitated, aggravated, angry, uh, you name it, you know, <clears throat> depressed at times, sad at times, up and down, moving around, you know, thought I had everything together. And if you see light, it's cars outside. It's, oh, we might see some lights too. But uh, <laughs> so it, I believe, you know, you get in enough pain and you gotta, you got to do something about it. You know, you, you got to, and nothing in my life is happening out here, so to speak. The, if I have an issue, if I have something I perceive as an issue, it's not out here. And I can't heal it out here. Very simply put, I can't heal it from something out here. I have to turn within. I have to turn within. And the truth transmutes all into the truth. Love transmutes all into love. And, and so once I turn within and I experience what's true, which is present, the present moment is true. Everything else is, is a memory. So, so if I'm in the present moment and I'm experiencing all things as they are unconditionally, then there's no memory of what it may be, good or evil, death or life, painful or, uh, what's the other one I'm looking for? Whatever the opposite to that is. <laughs> Pain and suffering or uh, maybe bliss and ecstasy, I don't know. Anger or, or peace or, or whatever. So, so being true to myself is being present. It's being. Not being anything at all, just being as I am. I am that I am, right? <clears throat> but that's not really, well, we are going to talk about some of that. We are going to talk about that, some of that. Um, yep, it's a mirror. It's a mirror revealing a program, a memory. And since we are one, this is really what I want to get across here today, and I'll, I'll just put it out there right now. Since we are one living entity, alive evolving organism we are one with and as all things everything every single thing every single thing happiness joy yeah pain and suffering happiness joy it's good to know these opposites it really is but as you can see dualism is really singularity because because everything is one and the same and and in all honesty i can have the life that i want to have and and there's many uh, techniques and that kind of thing, but 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 ultimately, what I want is to be in the pure state of repose, peace, and tranquility, being, just being, where everything flows to and from in harmony and balance. And I know that's possible because I've had that, <clears throat> uh, and it was given to me, and I had no idea how it happened. I woke up that way one day. And it lasted a full day where I, the only way I've been able to explain it with anybody, it was blissful, but it was just complete harmony <clears throat> where I was just being, uh, not judge. It's live. I was living life in the present moment, not, not judging one thing, one way or the other and experiencing all things. The trees were bending over talking to me, the birds, I, they were so loud. I could hear, it was just like, like last, last night I sat out on the front porch and, and went into a meditative state and, and I could no longer hear the cars around me. All I could hear were the crickets singing to me. It was almost as if I got tangled up. What's up, Isaac? It was almost as if I got tangled up in, in their sound and I became the sound. 
I was I was one with and as the sound. Yeah, the zero state, the pure state. To walk free of judgment. Because right now, we're all walking around perceiving things through memory. So here's an example, and we'll get into what I want to talk about. The last enemy to be, to be destroyed is death, right? It's in the Bible. It's in the good book. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And I encourage you to go through there and read uh, 1 Corinthians 15 if, if you'd like to get into it, specifically um, 12 to 28, uh, to get the contacts and really look at what who Christ is, what is Christ, and really look at what an enemy is, really look at, and we'll get into some of these words today. We'll get into some of these words today. <clears throat> um, but I, I, I'd like to propose a few questions to everyone. What is death and what is life? What is any experience at all that we have? If I was fresh out of the press and no one had ever told me about anything, I'd never learned a thing. I didn't know fire was hot. I didn't know I didn't know that certain words were mean. I didn't know that um, you know, lots of things. I, I you know, I I didn't know that if someone raised their voice, that was uh, being hateful or angry. So I didn't know anger. I didn't know sadness. I didn't know happiness. I didn't know um, peace. I didn't know love. I didn't know hatred. I didn't know any of these things. I was just I'm just pure. I'm in a pure state. <clears throat> Zero ground level. The valley had been made high and the mountains had been low. I'm balanced. There is no good or evil. I'm not perceiving and judging things, measuring things one way or the other. I am that I am. God is all, right? At the end of 1 Corinthians 15, it says that God may be all in all. And we know now that that word God, you know, the Greeks use this word theos, which means the creator and owner of all things. True. Jesus would have used Allaha, which means the one and only being. Father would have been Abloom, which is our one absolute, only eternal being. And I would like to propose that it's not the one and only being, it's our being. And we are here to be in experience. So, <clears throat> What is, what are these things? Life, death, light, dark, ease, disease, disease, good, evil, sad or happy, cold or hot. What are they? And how do we know what they are? And if I've never been taught what they are, good or bad, hot, hot, the warm's good, hot, too hot's bad, Cool is good. Too cold is bad. Negative and positive. Would I just be experiencing all things as they are? Truly. It's a great question. You know, it's a good question. I, I, I've really been, really been thinking about that. Who is the one asking the questions and who is the one answering those questions? I propose to you all that, okay, if... Let's, let's take this statement here. Let's, let's take um, God is, you, let's take this. You are a human, human being. Who is you? Being the human. Who is that you? Who is it looking through these eyes? Who is it experiencing all things? <clears throat> what is it standing behind everything we see? When does the invisible become visible? When does spiritual become physical? What if it's all one and the same? And more John Annabelle. Hey, 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 hey. Good to have you. Good to have you. 
What if dualism is really singularity? Is really oneness? <laughs> and it is. What if all things are connected? What if we are one body with everything? One entity? Then if we are, then you looking at me right now, you're, you're looking at yourself. If I come and present a problem or an issue to you, it's also your issue. <laughs> hey, Ashton. Yeah, I shaved. <laughs> Looking like a young man again. <laughs> so let's get let's dig into this and check and check some stuff out. I'll read it to you. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. So we've got the last, we've got an enemy, we've got will be, we've got destroyed, and we've got death, right? We've got death. I've dug into these words. I, I like to dig in and get to the roots, right, and the origins of things to see. It helps me see things more clearly. So the last enemy, enemy that will be destroyed is death. <clears throat> If death is an experience, then it then it would also be a feeling. The experience of death. And the experience of anything at all that we've named would be a memory because we've been taught about it, right? I don't I don't know something's hot. Why don't why don't we call it cold, for instance? Why don't we call it cold? Why is the stop sign the stop sign? See, that's a memory of something that we've been taught. And therefore, we have thought it. We've believed it. We've embraced it. We've embraced it. Everything we're experiencing is really a memory. <laughs> Life's a memory. <laughs> so we can either move from memory... Or we can move from inspiration, idea. The idea drops down from the heavens above, right? Conceived in our divine mind, brought forth as expression and manifest as forms. Idea, inspiration, intuition is when the idea or, the, or you could say the inspiration comes. The inspiration shows up and we follow there's really no thinking involved in that place. There's no judgment of it one way or the other. So most of the time we've been operating from memory, which means we're living in the past, which means we're not present, which means most of the time we're not experiencing what's true. Everything becomes, it filters through this memory. And it's ancient. It's very ancient. The memory of sin and death. The memory of separation and death. <clears throat> but, I, but I wish that you would choose life today, right? So that's in there. I wish you'd choose life. Today, choose life. So what happens when we only focus on, contemplate, place our attention upon, intentionally talk about life, <clears throat> take hold of, grasp, lay hold of, comprehend, Life, being, what happens to the memory of death? <laughs> what happens? <laughs> All right, I dug into that. What I just read you, the, la the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. <clears throat> it can read like this. The furthest extreme, and, and I'll get, I'm going to explain these extremes. The furthest extreme deep-rooted hostility Deep-rooted hostility to transition and become void is death. The furthest hostility. So, that word, the last, if you dig into it, means the furthest extreme end. It's not the last. It's the furthest extreme end of something. It's the furthest extreme end of something, which means it has another end, right? Right? 
And it, it's not an enemy. It's a deep-rooted feeling of hostility, hatred. Of what? Well, if it's a feeling, then it's, then it's, a, it's a thought, it's a memory. Because you can't, there is no separation. Neville Goddard told us that the, what feeling is the secret, right? When, the, when idea, when thought, or memory meets the feeling as if it already is, it becomes. They're not separate, though. They are one and the same. And, and I'll prove it here in a minute, these extremes. <clears throat> these extremes. And, and then it says that will be destroyed, or you, we could say to become. The word was made, became, um, all things transitioned, you could say. It's the same thing as Ganamahi, to transition from one realm sphere or condition into another realm sphere or condition. It's the same thing as the first law of thermodynamics, which states that energy can be neither created nor destroyed. Energy simply transfers condition, transitions transitions it says I think it says all things were made through not him through our being which is everything and in order to be everything it must be no thing at all right in order to be all things you must be nothing, nothing at all. The personality is a something. It's subjective, it changes. Who you are is objective, never changing, constant. At the highest frequency and vibration known. So fast and vibrating at such a fast speed that it looks to be standing still, stillness. And at such a high rate of frequency that it seems to be silent. The stillness and the silent, the quiet within. So the enemy is a deep-rooted feeling of hostility and hatred. A feeling. So it's a memory. So death is a deep-rooted feeling of hostility. It's a memory. It's a memory. So the last enemy or the last deep-rooted feeling, the last deep-rooted memory to be destroyed, and that word destroyed is not destroyed. That word destroyed, it should read to become or to transition condition, to transmute. So the last deep-rooted memory, feeling, one and the same, to transition is death. It's an energetic transition, that's right. You change the perspective of it. Death is not even death. What we're calling death isn't death, it's life. <laughs> so the last memory that it, that is something evil, something bad called death, the last memory to transition or transmute, to be transmuted, is death. Mortality. There is no mortality. There's only immortality. There's only life. There's only a transitioning. There's only a transitioning of energy. Or no thing at all. Something that has no form at all. Spirit, breath. That only takes form when we give it form. To think it's one way or the other, it takes form. But we're here to experience, right? We're here to experience. So so the, there's a principle of polarity, and, and I'll get into that. So 
it, it says everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. It says opposites are identical in nature but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. So if death is a memory, it's mental. It's in my mind. If it's a feeling, it's mental. It's a memory. It's within. It's not without. So where is memory transmuted? Where is feeling transmuted? I can be, I can be happy or I can be sad. Who's the generator and operator of that? Who's the director? Who is that? Who, who is it that raises or lowers the vibration of the personality? Who experiences the, the, the lower vibrations or higher vibrations? Who experiences lower frequencies or higher frequencies? The personality does. It's a mask. Who you've thought yourself to be and who you've been taught. But the personality is also the one experiencing the relationships. Right? It's an extension. Just as we are an extension. A hand. The hand of God, right? Our being. Unique expressions. All connected, all one. Everything is within. There, the, the within and the without, the two must become one. They're, they're all one and the same. So, so if it's mental, if it's in the mind, within, then I can turn within. I am the inner alchemist. We're talking about alchemy here. Transmutation. If it's mental... And, and, and there's a principle that says opposites, extreme opposites are one and the same. They're only differentiated by degrees of vibration between them. They are connected and one and the same. It's the same vibration. Lower the vibration, you'll experience sadness. Raise the vibration, you'll experience happiness. And we can do that by a simple turning of our attention and focus. There's many techniques, many ways. But the mind may be transmuted from state to state, degree to degree, condition to condition, pole to pole, vibration to vibration. You want to change your mind? Change the vibration. You want to change your memory? Change the vibration. You want to change your feeling? Change the vibration. We can experience death. We can experience life. We can experience dis-ease. We can experience ease. We can experience good. We can experience evil. All things have a rhythm, an ebb, and a flow to them. <clears throat> but through the mastery of, in the art of attention, the mastery of polarity, the mastery of inner alchemy, we can rise above the flow back into depression, you could, you could say. Yeah, you're not understanding mental, see? But we can talk outside of this. Who can understand the mind of God? I'm talking about that mind. <laughs> Which we are. So, so, check it like this. We'll look at this. <laughs> Death. What's the opposite of the experience of death? These are all experiences. What is an experience? You feel an experience, right? You feel it. You feel it. How do you know it's one way or the other? Because you have a memory of it. How is a child birthed into this world? They're pure. Zero. Pure. Slate is clean. Divine. No thing at all. Until it starts to learn. Right? But in our learning, we can shift any of these. 
Nico, my buddy Nico, check him out. Had a video on the other day. I've done it here in my house. He holds his thermometer, thermometer up and through focus and intention, he raises the temperature on the thermometer the, in, in the area. He raises the vibration. Cold and hot are simply separated by degrees of vibration, energy, energy. When does cold become hot? These are negative. These are positive. A positive tends to overtake a negative, consumes a negative. When does cold become hot here? When do the extremes meet? When does hot become warm and cold become cool? Each person experience may differ in this area depending upon perspective, depending upon the filter of memory. When does death become life and life become death? These are separated by degrees of, of vibration. Sad and happy. They're on the same pole. Disease and ease are on the same pole. How do I know when I'm diseased? The absence of ease. That's disease. How do I know when I'm diseased? I feel uneasy. I'd say that's in between there somebody, somewhere. Diseased, how do I know when I'm diseased? There's the absence of ease. I feel it. How do I know when I'm at ease? I feel it. These are separated by degrees of vibration. Therefore, I can lower or raise the vibration. If death is a memory, and a memory is within the mind, inside, and everything's inside, then death can be transmuted to life. in the same way that we can raise the vibration or lower the vibration. How are people actually resurrected from a physical death? It's happened many, 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 many times. It's, it's happened. They got videos of it. It's all over the place. Uh, I, you know, I personally have met a man that raised like 30-something people from the dead. How's that happen? Raise the vibration. Everything is alive. Everything vibrates. <clears throat> Everything. But what I would like to ask you, the question, is death an original thought or idea? Did it just come to you? Did it just come from inspiration, the thought of death? I'm gonna ask you a lot of questions to get you thinking. Did did it did it just come from were you inspired? Or is it something you've been told about, something you've seen, something you've experienced, and therefore it's a memory. It's an ancient memory. Sin came through one man and death by sin, right? Sin came by mankind and death by sin. So what is sin? The thought of another, separation, parts, not being connected. But then here it says that God may be all in all. All is one. One is all. It's, it's something the prophets have been seeing. It's, there's an awakening. Death and asleep can be the same thing. All are waking up. The vibration is raising. Consciousness is raising. You know, the personality, the consciousness, that part of us is raising. But who you truly are is your source, which, which is constant, never changing. So who's being reconciled? Who's being saved? I propose it's, it's your personality. <laughs> it's coming into alignment. All things. So that, so that if the last enemy is death, the last perceived enemy, the last deep-rooted memory is the memory of death, 
what's actually happening there. If it's becoming void, nothing at all, it's transmuting or dissolving into something. Well, life swallows up death. It's the opposite of death, right? It's death, life. They're on the same pole, though. And we know that opposites of the same pole transition condition by raising or lowering our vibration. It's, it's, it's just that simple. Life and death, which seems to be extreme opposites, are actually one and the same. They only vary by degrees of vibration. The only degree. <clears throat> By the principle of polarity, as I'm talking about here, we can manipulate energy. And if you don't like the word manipulate, I'm sorry, look it up, because it's not a bad thing either. We can shift, transition, energy transitions, condition, right? We can manipulate energy to create, produce, generate, manifest, transition, and unveiled realities, matter, worlds, realms, planes. Manifestation is an unveiling because all things already are. And God is all things. Our being is all things. And in order to be all things, it must be nothing at all. And everything at the same time. You ever heard people talk about the void in entering this place of nothingness? And at the same time, it they seem to know that it's everything. That place. That place. <clears throat> so if death is a, is a memory, it's a feeling. Memory and feeling are one and the same. They're, they're, they come together. It's a package deal. It's an experience. And if, and if it's the last or the furthest extreme, it's the furthest extreme from life, right, to transition. It's the furthest extreme. The, deep, the most deep-rooted memory is that. It's the furthest extreme to transition. Transition to what? Transition to life. And only life. The resurrection, that's the first the first fruits, but that's about all of us, right? Christ in through as you. Christ in through as a body known as humanity. The one idea of our being in through and as a body. Being present. We're all as well, always. So, in or, so if it's if it's a memory, and we can change our mental vibrations by uh, by shifting our attention, using the will. These are all technologies. The will is a technology. Your attention and focus is a technology. Your imagination is a technology. Your body is a technology. Your senses are a technology. <clears throat> Your personality is a technology. And we can change our mental vibrations by an effort of a technology known as the wheel. By deliberately fixing the attention of another technology upon a more desirable state, life. Ease, peace, good, happy, positive, love. So by cultivating these skills, being able to operate at our full potential, because that's in the Bible too. It says, till we all come to the knowledge of God, right? Till we all come to the unity of the faith. Till we all come to a perfect mankind. And that word perfect means operating at our full potential. Till we all come to the fullness of the Christ. Which is the anointing. Which is the projection. 
of our being, which is the unique expression of our being as each and every one and as all. So through cultivating the art of attention by means of our will, a technology, we can solve the secret of mental states, memories. We can transmute. So, as we continuously and only think about, contemplate, focus upon, meditate on, grasp, take hold of, comprehend, and turn our attention towards life, death is swallowed up. All who sleep wake up to life, to being, to experiencing and not being ran around by programs. This is also why it's recorded that Jesus, Jesus said, receive your Holy Spirit. What he's saying there, receive is lambano, what, however you pronounce it. What he's saying there is grasp, take hold of, comprehend that which you have always been. Our holy breath of life, the all-embracing breath of life, a spirit of holiness. That which you have always been, lay hold of, take hold of, grasp, comprehend. The very same thing I just said. Continuously and only think about, contemplate, focus on, meditate on, grasp, take hold of, comprehend, and turn our attention towards life. Be still and know I am God. Same thing. Same thing. So, one way we can practice these things, I'll give you something very practical because I love to get practical. <clears throat> Let's say you're just feeling a little low. I'll give you a great example. The other day, I, was, I woke up just frustrated. I woke up frustrated. Well, it was an issue. And if, if, if it's an issue for me, I know I'm dealing with a memory. And, it, and that memory must be in the mind. It's a thing. I'm doing frustration. It's a thing. It's a technology. It's, it's, it's something that I'm feeling and experiencing, which means I can raise it or lower it. How? Through using the technology of the will and attention. I 100% believe we are here learning to be that which we've always been. Learning to fully operate at our full potential as mankind, which is God. God is mankind. The incarnation of God. Jesus represents humanity. <laughs> Jesus was God. <laughs> Jesus is God. It's the story of us. And he said, on this day, you will know that just as I am God, you are me and I am you. The Father is God, our one, only, absolute, eternal being. So I was frustrated. All day long I went, I didn't use any of my skills. I didn't know what to do. You know, I was thinking about, I was in the program. I, could, I wasn't stopping. I did not stop. I did not stop. I just kept going and going and going, and the next point, the next point, the next point. Frustration. I'm trying everything. I'm calling people. I'm praying. You know, I didn't really do what I knew. I forgot. And all of a sudden, I get at the end of the day, I call a man, and he says, "Man," he said, "I never met a frustrated man that was a grateful man." I said, "Oh my God." He said, "Do you have a gratitude list?" I said, "Yeah, man. I make gratitude lists. I know about a gratitude list, man." You know, he said, "Well, is it in your pocket?" I said, no. He said, well, when you're in the shit, the program, the memory, you're probably not going to sit down and make a gratitude list. Why don't you carry it in your pocket? He said, could you get so angry and frustrated that you might do something harmful to yourself or another? 
could you get so angry and frustrated that it might actually lead to death? I said, yeah, I guess I could. He said, so is this about life or death? And I said, well, now that you put it like that, yes. And he said, so do you think carrying around a gratitude list in your pocket is a life or day, death thing? And I went, yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> he said, why don't you just put it on your phone? And, and, and the thing is, once we started talking about it, my attention shifted, it went away. So what happened? Did it go away? No, the vibration was raised. I read through the gratitude list. I got entangled with everything I'm grateful for. I saw it. I felt it. I tasted it. I heard it. And my vibration raised. So what happened to the frustration and the anger? <clears throat> anger is on the same pole as peace. I would say it's on the same pole as gratitude. This Everything over there is, is the absence of ease, I would say. <laughs> so I want ease. So I turn where ease is. And there's tools I can use to do this. And I put a lot of stuff out there with, to do with this. But it says the last enemy, the last deep-rooted feeling or memory that's hostile towards God, which is us, is death. And it's not, well, it is destroyed because it transitions. It's the extreme opposite of life. And the pendulum always swings. We've been so death focused, but now the pendulum is swinging back into oneness, into our being, and death's being swallowed up by life. So y'all have a great day. A lot there. Hope it didn't confuse you. Um, Sue, I'd love to talk to you outside of this about uh, mental and all that good stuff. Um, remember, uh, well, I believe spirit is everything. So physical, mental, it's all spirit. It's all God. So it's all, which means it's all us. So I love you all. Hope that helped. Um, if you have questions, please hit me up. We can talk about them and we can clean up the memory together. Have a great day today. Peace.